so we we learn that we we start to um, experiment with that and explore that from very early on. Mm-hmm. You know, who these are some different needs that we have. These are some different parts of who we are, and so we execute our voice differently in order to achieve different results. And that doesn't change when we grow up. Welcome to Audio Branding, the hidden gem of marketing. I'm your host, Jody Krangel, and this podcast will discuss just how sound influences our behavior. I generally talk about this in the context of advertising and marketing, but there are other places this is important too. I really feel that it plays a much more important role in our lives than maybe we realize. So let's delve a little deeper. This is the first part of my interview with Robert Kennedy III. My next guest is the co-founder and president of Speak Right Now Communications. He is a serial entrepreneur and started his first business in 2001, an online music promotion portal with an internet radio station. He is an award-winning public speaker, corporate trainer, and author. His books include 28 Days to a New Me, Seven Ways to Know You Should Lead, and Find Your Voice, 28 Secrets to Help You Speak Up and Speak Out. He has a background in education, media, and radio. Through his training company, he works with leaders who need to deliver critical messages with confidence. He lives in the state of Maryland, where he has been featured on Fox and CW for his work around confident communications. His name is Robert Kennedy III, and I'm really looking forward to our conversation. If you want to learn how to better communicate your message, listen close. Thanks for talking with me today, Robert. This is fantastic. I'm glad we're finally getting a chance to talk. <laughs> um, no, no problem. Yeah. How are you keeping up? Uh, this is weird times. Are you uh, noticing anything particular, like any any pitfalls you're falling into? I know with me, it's uh, remaining motivated. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I don't think that that's a problem for me. It's It's more so doing too much. Mm -hmm. I feel like because I've been, everything's virtual now, I don't have the space of driving from appointment to appointment in my car. I don't have the space of managing those back-to-backs. Everything is, oh yeah, yeah, it's, 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 it's phone it's virtual so <laughs> yeah. we can just do them i'm my 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 commute is like from the kitchen to my office mm-hmm. so <laughs> so everything is smushed together and and i feel like i'm a little bit more busy now than i was before yeah it's kind of crazy i guess when you can put video conference after video conference after video conference and not have to move around yeah. it's hard to get space in between yeah. Um, yeah, I get stressed about that as well. There's so many virtual meetings going on, even in voiceover, like all of the people I know are all getting together and doing things virtually. And there's yeah. a never ending parade of new virtual conferences <laughs> and things like this. So, yeah, it can get overwhelming. <laughs> yeah, it can. It yeah. Can. But what we're going to talk about today, and I'm really excited about this, is the communication part of all of that, obviously, is is a mm-hmm. big part of how sound influences us. So as something that I could talk about on this podcast, I was really excited about talking with you further on that. So I wanted to sort of dig into what your background is in sound. I know that you have been a voice actor and a teacher yeah. as well, right? Yeah. So I've done... I guess quite a bit in sound. So I, I did a voice. I did voice acting for mm-hmm. for a bit. I was a singer. I had a singing group for quite some time as well. I I started a group in my sophomore year, junior year of college, mm-hmm. and then I started another one after that. So I've I founded, started about three or four singing groups, choirs, and in in that process, as a part of that, and wanting to get better really did voice lessons and learned quite a bit about breathing, breathing, not breathing, breathing, (laughs) (laughs) breathing. That's a different podcast. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Right. Um, You know, working with the diaphragm and and some of those types of things that we take for granted Mm -hmm. that really affect how we our energy and and how we communicate and how we connect with people and you know things like instead of dying out at the end of your phrases really being able to use your diaphragm using your lungs using your breath control Mm -hmm. to really push your energy 
all the way through the end of your phrases. And, and, and those are things that I didn't pay attention to or really know about before. I mean, and just recently we're hearing about terms like vocal fry and I didn't yeah. know what that was. <laughs> yeah. I didn't. Uh, yeah, I didn't know what that was. I've, you know, I've heard it. Mm -hmm. I've heard. I won't say any names of actors or actresses <laughs> that do it. There but, are a few of them. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I didn't know anything mm -hmm. about it. I just, I heard it. I identified it. I wondered why and what it was. And then, as I kind of dug back into some of the training that I, that I got, wow, yeah, that's exactly breath control and just not being intentional about certain things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, although I would say that in some cases vocal fry is quite intentional <laughs> yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah i think it depends on yeah. how you're using it and who's using it <laughs> but <yeah>. exactly exactly <laughs> well, no, yeah we're not getting into names no, or example no. there but yeah. not at all yes <laughs> yeah well so how did you transition from that into uh, uh public speaking and and i guess sort of teaching this whole storytelling thing I just want to get further into that because it's it's fascinating. <laughs> right. So the, my my entry into voice acting was I I was a teacher for mm -hmm. 10 years and I taught biology and physics okay. in the classroom. Mm -hmm. And I moved into the world of instructional design and creating online courses for companies. But so so I, I don't want to make this story too long. Part of my background <laughs> we have time. is, yeah, we've got time. Part of my background is radio okay, as well. Sure. So before, while I was, before I started teaching, actually, I was in the mental health field and I was, I would drive by this radio station every day mm -hmm. on my way to work. And one day I finally decided to go into the radio station, spoke to the owner and long story short, he put me on as an intern with the news anchor. Great. And so I did that for quite a quite a bit of time and really honed some things. One of the things that he said to me right as we had our very first conversation, he said, "You've got a really good tool, my voice." Mm -hmm. he, he said, "You've got a." He said, you, "There's some training that you need, but you already have come equipped with something that a lot of people don't have, mm -hmm. at least for this particular circumstance or this medium." Sure. So I took that to heart, and after I started to do instructional design and course building, one of the things that people started to ask was, hey, can you do the narration for our <laughs> courses? Yeah. And so I said, sure, I can do that. What does that entail? And so I got voiceover training, mm -hmm. did some, some voiceover courses here, and then, of course, got on a lot of the different voice sites, voice123.com, yes. yeah. voices.com. Mm -hmm. Um, what was that other one? Uh, there was one Bell something. Oh, yeah, Bedalgo. One, yeah, Bedalgo. Yes, yeah. you know it. I know yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> Armin is yeah, a great so, guy. He's a, it's a German um, directory, yes. and so you reach a lot of Europeans that way. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So was on all of those and got some pretty neat gigs. I did a voiceover spot for Nature Valley. I did great. some some pretty neat ones, and it was really great. But a lot of the work that I was doing was in that online course development space, doing a lot of e-learning voiceovers. Sure. That's a lot more work than people think. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's, yes. It's quite uh, the yes. long haul. Yeah. I had my Three people. hours <laughs> as opposed to a 30 second commercial. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, definitely. Yeah. So it can be quite the uh, quite the thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but so it sounds to me like sound has always been important to you. And yeah. using it in the context of reaching people more deeply and um, more intentionally, I guess, mm -hmm. is sort of where I'm going with this. Um, right. So how do you, um, well, well, first of all, uh, because sound has always been important to you, um, how do you feel that you use it in, in your career in order to connect more deeply with people? Wow. So one of the things that, that I really share with leaders of organizations mm -hmm. is that your voice and the way that you use it goes a long way towards building trust with people, sure. allowing them to hear your passion, allowing them to hear your connection with the vision and, and where the company or the organization is going. So really paying attention to that. A lot of times people kind of feel like, oh, well, I can talk. <laughs> I've, yeah. I've grown up talking. I've talked my entire life. Uh, so <laughs> they don't pay attention to some of the subtle nuances of not just the words that you say, but what you do with your voice mm -hmm. as you're saying some of those words. 
You know, do I do I speed it up? Do I use a little bit more depth mm -hmm. as I share that information? Or do I get a little bit more high pitched in order to 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 share my, my excitement mm -hmm. about some of those things and maybe my conviction or my passion about certain things and the speed at which I say certain things plays a, a role as well. And so hearing uh, really being aware of some of those nuances and differences are some of the ways that I that I work with leaders. And yeah, so that that's that's really how I feel leadership mm -hmm. and voice connect. Yeah. And uh, you had mentioned before your voice of a leader presentation. Do you talk yeah. about that in in that context or, or what is that Absolutely. presentation? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. We are actually developing an assessment where there are four, there, there's some different quadrants. Let me see if I can pull it up while I'm talking to you and multitask here. <laughs> sure. So there, yeah, so there, there are four different uh, quadrants in which we, we look at voice and hold on one second. I think I got it. There we go. Woohoo. <laughs> <laughs> so we talk about conviction, mm -hmm. confidence, uh, being compelling and competence okay. and how that shows up in, in your voice. And so what are the things that a leader can do vocally to engender or to exhibit some of those different traits? OK, mm -hmm. so it's like the 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 confidence is your body. The con conviction is your heart. The competence is your head and being compelling is 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 from your mouth. Mm -hmm. So how do you look at those things? What do I really want to do for my audience? What is it that I, how do I want them to respond? How do how do I want them to connect mm -hmm. to this content? And so based on that, what part of my voice am I going to use as a leader? And maybe even further than that, where do I lean naturally so that I can learn how to adjust that in order to achieve the results that I want in that particular setting? Yeah, that's a, a great thought there too, because then I guess if you're already leaning in the direction you're inclined to go, it's mm -hmm. easier to get where you need to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. And being aware of that as well mm -hmm. allows you to maybe pivot or adjust if you have a leaning towards maybe the passion and conviction side of your voice but maybe your audience doesn't want the passion and conviction maybe they're more data driven mm. and so now you need to be even more compelling so it depends now, on your audience yeah exactly yeah exactly yeah. for ways to improve your company's or podcast's impact? You'd be surprised how powerful the use of an intentional audio branding strategy can be. Want to know more? I have a free downloadable PDF that gives you my five tips for implementing an intentional audio strategy at voiceoversandvocals.com slash audio dash branding dash strategy. That location does ask to put you on a mailing list just to send you updates on when the new podcasts come out. But if you really don't want to give your email out, I understand. Just contact me directly. My email is all over my website. And I'll make sure you get that PDF without needing to sign up anywhere. If you do sign up, though, you also get access to a resources section called The Studio, where I have videos, white papers and PDFs, discounts from my guests, and snippets of audio from my guests that no one else gets to hear. So maybe it's worth your while. Totally up to you. And of course, if you're looking for voiceovers, you can get in touch with me about that too. Now, back to the podcast. So can you talk a little about communication styles? Because I know you've sort of touched on that like just now, mm -hmm. um, but there are um, subconscious messages that are triggered with the voice. So where do you yeah. see that leading? Well, we, we kind of go back to the word awareness, mm -hmm. even outside of communication. One of the big things that I share with people is the word results, especially when you're dealing with communication and relationship. What is the result mm -hmm. that you're after? What is what is the result that you need? And people kind of look at it from from a from a weird perspective. Sometimes they they say that I am the way that I am. And and that's and that's who I am. That's mm -hmm. like an old Popeye statement. Yeah. Right? <laughs> right. That's like an old reference. I know how oh, yeah. old you are. No, I, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. So it, it, people kind of stick themselves in these boxes. 
And when we look at it, especially as far as relationship and communication are concerned, yeah, you are who you are, but what is the result ultimately that you want? And can you adjust and can you be flexible in order to meet those results? Some people say, well, no, I've got to be me. Outside of that, it's it's manipulation. But, you know, we we sell, we we manipulate, we do that all the time. Mm-hmm. And we don't I don't want to put a negative spin on it the entire time. What is it that we're after? What is it that we're after from the time that that I'm a kid, I'm a baby? Uh, parents instinctively know that babies are humans, <laughs> right? And, and they need <laughs> food so. <laughs> at, at some point. Yeah. They need they need to eat at specific points of the day in order for them to live. Mm-hmm. But as a baby, you have this natural instinct that says, hey, I need to make a sound. I need to do something in a certain way so that they know that it's time to do this, right? And yep. so I, I, I don't know if you're a mom or not, but one of the things that I've learned from my wife is that my child can cry in specific ways and she knows what they need based on the cry. Yep. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, th- this cry, oh, yep, they're wet. This cry, oh, yep, they're tired. They need to go to sleep. This cry, <laughs> uh, yep, they're hungry. Right. And so yeah. so so we we learn that we we start to um, experiment with that and explore that from very early on. Mm-hmm. You know, who these are some different needs that we have. These are some different parts of who we are. And so we execute our voice differently in order to achieve different results. And that doesn't change when we grow up. Yeah. Right? We just we just become less willing to admit it because. You know, we've we somebody has put a negative spin on it and, and we don't want to feel we try to not feel icky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I always right? wonder about that because like a lot of people say, oh, I don't want to market. It makes me feel icky. It makes me feel like I'm selling, you know, and I, I have to. Yeah, we do all the time and and mm-hmm. in various different ways. And to people who may or may not want what we have to give. <laughs> right. So, I mean, you got to find who wants what you have to give. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I would I would suggest that it's not about being icky. It's about being real, actually. And it's and about, we can do that in our voices. Yeah, it's about being real. But even further than that, it's about survival. Yes. Survival, because all of this comes back to our, our root instincts. All of this comes back to Maslow's hierarchy of needs. All mm-hmm. of this comes back to those base things that we need in order to live. Mm-hmm. You know, so we've got the survival, we've got the food, but then after that, we're seeking all the way up to happiness. How, how do we get to contentment yeah. <laughs> as, as a piece of our lives? And it's kind of crazy that we think about this from really the voice does all of that. The voice can contribute to all of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it does. Yeah. And y- your, your use of it, your intentional use of it can determine where in that continuum you, you, you attach. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a very good point. <laughs> um, I don't know if you've actually sort of mentioned the different communication styles. Do you like recall those I, I mean I don't maybe remembering mm-hmm. off the top of your head is because <laughs> I wouldn't remember <laughs> I mean there, there are so many different systems mm-hmm. there, there, there are so many different systems um, and and what I do really is inside of the space of leadership communication mm-hmm. so you know you you talk about some of the different systems like situational leadership systems okay. how do you communicate inside of that? You know, there's there's systems where you've got uh, drivers and amicables and amiables and expressives. Mm -hmm. And and how does each of those styles communicate? Right. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you could even go back to Myers-Briggs and, you know, the introverts versus the extroverts and then the INTJ, INTP, INFP, INFFJ, all of those different things and study how they communicate and why they communicate and the best way to communicate with each of those people, Mm -hmm. you know, over, over, over the course of time. And so it's, there are definitely different communication styles, but you've also merged with that, the personality styles Mm-hmm. of of and leadership styles 
of people and what's necessary for some of those different for the different situations. So you're leaning into what your strengths are as opposed to yes. having to go too far. Okay, I get it. Leaning it leaning into your strengths but mm-hmm. also understanding who you're communicating with so that you know how to effectively connect yes. and reach them. Yeah. Is there a particular one that you like to use more than others? Um, you know, and, I guess and it would be really specific to you too, right? On, <laughs> yeah, it, it really depends on the organization. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, there there are some that lean that prefer disc. I'm I, I'm I'm okay with with the disc. I think Myers Briggs sixteen personalities has been around for a very long time, mm-hmm. and so I think that is one of the ones that's probably the most popular that people really understand because it's a part of our lexicon. It's a part of our language. Everybody hears the term and understands introverts versus extroverts. Yeah. Sometimes incorrectly because we <laughs> think inherently that introvert means, ooh, you're shy. You don't like people. Mm-hmm. You don't like talking to people. Yeah. And that's not necessarily true. No. You know, I'm a public speaker. I'm a, I'm a trainer. I'm a pastor's kid. I've been in front my entire doggone life. Mm-hmm. I'm an introvert. <laughs> yeah. It's about how you get your energy back, right? If you yeah, if yeah. you get your energy back by being alone and having quiet yeah. time, that's an yeah. introvert. <laughs> yep. And yep. I am definitely yep. in that camp. <laughs> so exactly. I totally get it. <laughs> but our exactly. lives have to be fairly public. Uh, so, yep. you know, there's only so much you can do before you hit a wall. <laughs> right. Right. But it's not that you don't do it. No, no, no. <laughs> no, I, I, I do. I, I spend quite a bit of recharge time. And I have mm-hmm. to be intentional about that. I, yep. I get up before the rest of the world. I get up before the rest of my family. I got to get up at least one to two hours before they do mm-hmm. so that I can have margin and I can breathe. And yeah, otherwise I'll get up and I'll be mad at everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't want that. Actually, along those lines, I'm curious about something. What do you do to be intentional with your alone time? Like, do you meditate? Do you do anything? Uh, I'm all. I'm almost asking this because of the weird times we're in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so if there's something yeah. that you're intentional about in that, I'd love to hear about it. Well, you know, I, I would love to be perfect in this and and oh, no sometimes people say, yeah, I do this and I meditate and I, mm-hmm. you know, and I do write my affirmations and I do all these things and I have done and I do all of those things. And sometimes I do it and sometimes I'm good at it and sometimes I stink at it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Some, sometimes, you know, it's like the, it's like anything else. Sometimes I'm on the wagon and sometimes I fall off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely. Know, I, I do try to be consistent, though, in at the very minimum getting up and being in my own space with no other noise Mm -hmm. before everybody else. Okay. Before everybody else. It's just me and the birds. It's me. It's, it's me. And sometimes if I can get up before the birds and maybe it's just me and the crickets (laughs) or cicadas at that point, (laughs) then, then I, then I do that. But I do, I do remain consistent in getting up. And sometimes that involves, yeah, doing some meditation. Sometimes it's literally sitting quietly. Sometimes it may be, I get up and I, I may read or I may scroll but it's a space where I'm non-judgmental mm-hmm. with me. You yeah. know how you, you get up and you're and you're nervous. You're, not you're nervous. You you're on Facebook or you're on something and you're like, oh, geez, I shouldn't be on Facebook. Yeah, I'm kind of like, listen, this is my non-judgmental time. <laughs> yeah. I'm up. Do what you got to do. <laughs> I'm doing whatever the heck I want yes. with this time because it's mine and it's just me. Yes. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I actually I find when I have absolute silence around me, like I love birdsong and that kind of thing, but I yeah. can't listen to music. It's weird because I'm a musician as well, and yeah. I can't listen to music when I want my peaceful time. It, right. I, my, my brain works too fast when I'm listening to music. I'm, I'm analyzing it. I can't stop analyzing it. So I have yep. to turn it off and just have nothing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I've gotten to this place. I mean, I, I think as a young musician... I never, ever could imagine that I'd reach a place in my life where I wouldn't want to listen to music, mm-hmm. right? And so I, it was weird. It was maybe about seven, eight years ago for the first time. I was I was just kind of driving in the car, and I realized it, it just kind of, I, I noticed that I didn't have any music on. Mm-hmm. I had, I, everything was off, and I was just writing in silence, and it was quiet. And it was, and it was great. And it's nice. Yeah. It's actually kind of nice. 
Yeah. yeah. I don't know when I came to that realization. I think it's been a long time, actually. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's, I guess, again, comes down to communication styles and personality styles and things like mm -hmm. that. And all of us are different in what we need in order to yeah. recharge. This has been part one of our interview. I hope you'll tune in next week for part two. Well, that's the end of this episode. Thanks for listening. And if you like what you heard, why not tell a friend about this podcast? It's available on all the usual outlets. Until next time.